All right, so welcome to another uh, episode or another uh, video. Uh, for this one, we're going to use Amazon, and we're going to take advantage of the one year of free stuff. Um, they give you a free instance of 30 gigs, and you can run that for free if this is the first time you've created an Amazon account. So uh, we're going to use it to run a dedicated Minecraft server. Uh, so if we go in here, uh, once you log in, I'll show you the... When you first log into Amazon uh, AWS, you'll go into your instances and you'll see there's, I don't have any running right now, so we'll come in here and we'll just launch a new instance. And we're just going to select this uh, Linux Amazon AMI. And you can see here this is the free tier, this uh, T2 Micro. Uh, see it's only got one gig of memory, um, but if you look at Minecraft, the Java memory settings are one gig as well. So. Um, <coughs> this is the maximum and minimum settings for your memory and you can see that it, it allocates a gig and it doesn't and it doesn't expand past that but if you're going to end up with a bunch of people on your server obviously you'll need to increase this which means you'll need to increase your uh, image size so you can stop the image and increase it at any time but you'll start to incur costs at that point um, but for you know just for messing around uh, doing your own thing this is more than enough um, I've done this before and it runs just fine. So, um, select your T2 Micro, go to Next. You can pretty much accept all the defaults. I have another video on VPC, so you can use that video and, and create your own um, dedicated setup if you really want to. But um, for, for just this little box, it'll sit in a public facing subnet um, and everything will be just fine. So, it's going to get an IP address. You can see here it says Enabled. So it'll have a public IP address. It'll be in the uh, 2A zone. This is in the Oregon um, data center. And I'm using the out-of-the-box VPC for this. Now with the free storage, you can get up to 30 gigs. Um, but eight is more than sufficient for this. We're just gonna run the instance on there. So it doesn't really need to be any more than that. But you can take advantage of this 30 gigs. Um, again, it's free for a year. Minecraft. Minecraft server. Okay. And on the security groups, uh, we are just going to utilize this existing one. Minecraft. And we're going to do the same here. Just add the description in here. Now, <coughs> we need to add a rule to allow the Minecraft boards to work. So, uh, the Minecraft open port that you need is 25565 and we're gonna set that to be anywhere so that you know friends and family and whatever can connect to this server and that's pretty much all she wrote okay view instances and that's gonna take a second to come up as it does so this will be our IP address and we connect to it like this easy2-user at the IP and it's going to take a minute for it to finish launching okay so it looks like it's up almost there we go okay so first thing we do is we want to make sure that we're current on everything security patches hotfixes everything so just do a yum update right off the bat make sure we're up to current So again, that was just a yum update, um, and we accepted all the defaults. Now, we're also going to want to install, I don't know if Java is on here already, so we're just going to do, oops. Install, and it looks 
like it's just, let's see, we can do Java. We're going to want to do this one. I believe. Yeah, let's do that one. So this is the latest one, Java 1.8, and it's the OpenJDK. Um, and this is a 64-bit environment, so that's the one we want. So we'll just install that one real quick. Okay, now it should be good, so I'm going to go into op. So let's add a user, Steve, because you know, Minecraft is, it's all about Steve. And we're going to go to opt, let's change ownership, personally, Steve, Steve, Minecraft. Alright, <coughs> now in the Minecraft folder, we're going to get the download which is right here so we're going to copy link address and paste it in here using wget um, and it's going to download the java instance okay now we also need a startup file okay and this we're literally just going to copy and paste this right here Copy, um, paste, okay. and see the name here just says uh, Minecraft Server .jar, So we got to rename this file. Move Minecraft Server .jar to okay. So we can see that we're gonna do a chmod plus x on the start to make it executable, and we're gonna hit it. Okay, now it's gonna cry about the EULA, but it hasn't extracted anything yet. Okay, so here it says right here, you need to agree to the EULA. So we go in here and you edit the EULA.txt and you set this to true. Okay, now we launch it again. And this time it will finish extracting all of the different pieces. Oh, looks like it cried out about something. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll go back to that when it's finished launching. So this is actually creating the areas, the zone and stuff. Okay, it's done. So it says here um, that it couldn't find the band player's JSON, which is fine. So that's not an issue. Um, you can create that later if you start having problems with people joining that you don't want them playing. Um, and you'll see this too, this uh, can't keep up, and uh, it's basically a time issue between your server and your clients and whatever, um, but this machine only has one gig of memory, so you can see that it's going to be pretty tight. Oh, stop. Let's stop. Okay, so you can see, free dash m is the amount of memory, so it's only really got you know, 950 total. So, Minecraft startup. Uh, and it's asking for 1024. So, it, like I said, it's going to be kind of tight, but it does run. And notice it created all the other files. So, it created the band JSON, it created the other files. So, when you launch it again, it's not going to cry about that. So, in our server properties, um, this is where you can make all your uh, different settings and all your other stuff that you want. Um, you'll notice this is the port number so if you want to do a different port you can change it there okay so let's see is there anything else we want to do on that let's just run it again we want to actually do this that's what right okay so the cursor one more time now in the Linux and Unix world you really never want to run anything as the root user um, you always want to run it as a uh, system or non-privileged user. So in this case, we are going to run this as the Steve user. So we're going to ask you to Steve. Okay. And we're going to run a screen. Oh, not going to let me do it that way. This way. Screen. So run it from here, and then we'll do it. Okay. 
Okay, so let me back up just so you can get it all. Okay, so what we are is this is my local machine. Now we're connecting to it, and we are now the default EC2 user. And I'm going to run a program called Screen, which allows me to run multiple sessions. And from here, we're going to do sudo su to Steve. Okay, now because I'm in Screen, I can do Control Alt C. And then I have multiple windows when I do Control Alt N or Control A N, I can switch between them. So uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with screen, but it allows you to background the terminals and they keep running. So if we go into here to Opt and Minecraft, now we start this up now. Now I can see I can jump between those two sessions. So and that'll allow us to keep that one running. Okay, now just let's make sure that it worked. Um, I'm gonna launch Minecraft. Okay. And we're going to add a server. And it's going to be the same. Where did it go? Right here. Will be this IP address right here. Okay, so we're gonna just do this. Five two dot thirty three two ninety nine dot two one three. And this is gonna be Amazon. So just so we can see that. Okay, fifty three or fifty two thirty three two ninety nine two thirteen done. And I'm going to go ahead and join it. Maybe. See, that's my bad. 229, 299 isn't even in the network. It stops at 255, I should have caught that. So anyway, 229, 213, done. And I bet that's better. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so we now have a dedicated server running on Amazon AWS. We can do whatever we need to do. Anyway, you get the idea. Oops. If you're worried about securing this um, from the evil doers of the world out there, you can do all that with your security groups. So when you go in here and you create your Minecraft, go into your inbound and you can edit this. Now, uh, 
you can change this SSH port so that only your local IP, so you can do my IP, and it'll make it so that only your local machine can connect to this. Um, and you can do the same thing with your Minecraft port. So you can lock it down so that anybody else can't get into it. Um, now the rest of it is just the same as you would normally manage. Oops. Um, you know, your instance, you can do So like here we can do op my user so I can you know basically just manage it normally. Now when I want to disconnect from here I can do a control A D and you can see here that it is detached from that screen session and then I can exit and then I'm back on my local machine. Now the instance is still running out there and to reconnect to it I just re SSH to that and I can do screen again, this time with a dash R, and it will reconnect to the, the instance where I left off. So you can leave this running for as long as you want, and you don't have to babysit it on your local machine. You can connect to it as you need to. So, anyway, that is the quick and dirty dedicated Minecraft server tutorial. And you can, like I said, you take advantage of Amazon's. Um, brand new user account and you can run it for a year for free so uh, anyway that's it for today